I am at Burford Church, which is a small parish church about 25 miles from the center of Oxford. So my teachers assigned me to go look at this church and to understand the architectural sequence, the use of materials. It's a very nice church built over several centuries. Um, I think it's, it's, it's very enjoyable looking at it and trying to identify the construction sequence. So here behind me, right there, you have a beautiful 11th century Norman door built after the year 1066 by the Norman invaders of England. And here above the door, right there, we have these beautiful little figures that are carved into the stones, little gargoyles, little heads. Look, they look almost like animal heads. So this would have been the original entrance to the, to the church in the 11th century. Now, not really used, kind of closed. And then, later on in the, probably the 14th or 13th centuries, after building the original Norman church right here, they added a lady chapel, which is a small little chapel on the side of the church. You can tell that it's a Norman structure simply by the arch right here. So this is a Roman arch, so it's a perfect half circle. It's not a pointed arch like the window above, which is a later addition. And so here you can tell that it's Norman by the arch and by these very distinct uh, kind of triangular pointed uh, decorations along the exterior and by the nature of the carving. So you get these kind of primitive looking faces. Here you have like a jackal, a raven, different kinds of birds and animals along the exterior rim of the arch. And you can also tell that it's a Norman structure by the quality of the stonework. So here on this side of the arch and on the other side of the arch, you have this kind of pretty crude stonework. So this is kind of rubble stone right here, where there's a pretty large gap between, about an inch or so between each of the stones. So that's a lot of mortar. And then as we move further along the wall, here we get to a later addition, which is clearly, clearly a different kind of stone. So this is limestone, same material, but very finely carved. This is clearly not rubble, so there's almost a millimeter precision, very small gap between each piece of stone. So this is much more stable than the, than the earlier construction. So here with this later construction, you can see that this is a buttress, maybe out of the 13th or 14th centuries that goes up along the side of the original structure right here. So originally they built this arch right here, and then the window above, and a buttress right here, and then finally, probably in the 15th or 16th centuries, they built this aisle, which is on the side. So there's central vesicle, vessel of the church right here, and there's an aisle right there, and another aisle right there, one on either side of the church. And you can tell that it's a later addition by the kind of stonework. So here, on the exterior wall right here, you can see the buttress, and you can see where the buttress kind of abruptly ends. So this would have been originally the cornice of the structure that would have extended here on back. And you can tell that when they added this aisle right here with the pointed arch, which is later addition, pointed arch is always later than, ro than rounded arch, i.e. Norman arch. And so when they built this aisle right here, they demolished the part of the buttress right here, just leaving that little stub at the end. So that's later addition. And then right here I find a part of the church that's very interesting. There you have this odd little window right here, just kind of built into the stonework right here. So that means that originally this building came first right here, and this building came first also. And then they built this kind of aisle between them, and in the process they cut off the light to this window right here. So they had to create a very odd looking incision in the wall so as to provide room for that little slit window. So it's those small details that make the church or interesting, the accumulations of centuries of different styles and architecture. So here I'm on the north side of the church, so the apse of the church, excuse me, the, the choir of the church, the east end is right there, the west end is all the way over there, and above me right here you can see an interesting selection of three different arches. So right here you have the original arch, right there, that's the Norman arch, that's the oldest one, rounded, and then right here you can have a traditional pointed arch, so these are later additions. That's the second, th second type of arch. And right here above me, which is the latest edition of the church, you have an interesting kind of arch. It's called an OG arch. It's not arched, it's not pointed. It's kind of, it's kind of shaped like the tip of an onion, so it's kind of, point it's kind of the mixture between a traditional arch, whose tip is inverted outward to form a very kind of sharp decorative point, kind of like the tip of a Islamic minaret, so that's a very decorative arch. That's, 
associated more with the perpendicular style, the latest kind of Gothic. It's it's pretty recent. It's not my fav it's not my favorite kind of arch. I, I'm, I like I kind of like the, the traditional pointed arch and the Norman arch, but it's still an inter interesting kind of selection. So you can re literally identify which which parts of the structure came came last, came earliest, on the basis of the type type of the arch. So this is the the southern side of the church facing south. You have the west end of the church over there. You have the east end over here. So in that case, the apse of the church, where the altar is, is going to be right there, flat-ended. And here you're going to have the original main entrance on the other side. And this right here is one of the side aisles, the Lady Chapel. Just a small chapel. And here, you're going to have the southern entrance of the church. And above the crossing of the church, which is the very center of the structure, you're going to have this belt, this medieval tower right here. So if you look at the tower, right there below the sundial, below the clock, you're going to have a pair of Norman arches, rounded. And then above that, you can see a, the original cornice line right there, which was the original top of the structure. So in the Middle Ages, before the 13th century, the roof would have been right there. And then later on, the, they extended the building upwards, up, 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 to there. And they built this structure right here, and the original, and this new steeple. So that heightened the structure in the Middle Ages. And here you have on the side you have the, the little buttress on the exterior that serves the spiral staircase that goes from the ground up, up, up to there, where the bells are stored behind those two windows right there. So right here is the again the crossing tower of the church with the steeple above. And it's interesting looking at the later additions to this part of the structure. So right here you have the original Norman structure, and then you have right beneath there you have the Norman structure, and then above it you have the later addition. So it's interesting looking at this later addition and looking at the small details right there. So here you have the central arch. And then on either side you have two little windows, one right there and another one right there that would have originally been open to the outside. So there would have been probably stained glass there. But apparently when they added the structure above, that put a lot of increased weight, several, probably several hundred tons of weight on top of the original crossing tower. And in the process, destabilized the tower, forcing them to close up these windows. Later on, you can most interestingly see these bands. These are iron bands, probably added in the maybe 16th or 17th centuries to prevent the structure from buckling outwards because of the weight of the spire above and the weight of the bell tower right here push, puts a lot of pressure on the original 11th century Norman wall. So an interesting little detail looking at these churches are the gargoyles. So here on either side of this window right here, we have these little, this little gargoyle guy right here. You have another little gargoyle guy right there. The third one right beneath the cornice right there. So these aren't really functional for the distribution of water, but they're purely interesting carvings. And so here at Burford, many of them are of medieval people. So here on the right hand side, you have a guy in a cloak. On the other side, you have a man in a long mustache and long beard. And so each one has its own, has its own distinct little personality. It's interesting having those small kind of details that really lend a human face, a human kind of personality to the structure. So now I'm going to go inside the church and keep on exploring.